Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video, we'll be doing a little update about the scooter project or the scooter LED project and what we'll see where I'm at and what I've been doing because eh, things haven't been going as I planned it or rather uh, it's, it, it, it'll work, it just won't fit. <laughs> so let's take a quick look at what I have here. I'm currently running a testing setup of two DC-DC converters. And we'll take a closer look at those in a minute and also at what I've been doing to the scooter itself. But if you look over here, I just uh, added some more light. This was the DC-DC converter that I wanted to use initially. And well, this is a behemoth because it can do 5 volt 15 amps. But well, as you'll see in a minute, it's way too big. It's really good. It's really cool. I've seen Bitlooney also using these at the same time, actually. Uh, those are great, but yeah, too big. So that went away. Then I took a look at this guy, and this guy could do it. It has the right input voltage. It says output 10 amps, but it can do that because it can use this little box as a heatsink. Too big. <coughs> And then I took one of these. These are actually uh, pretty cheap. They come in this little housing. And inside is this. And this could almost work. Uh, I mean, technically it worked. Again, it was uh, too big, so I couldn't make it fit. But this was starting to go into the right direction. So, and I'll show you this later in the video. Once I did all my planning where I want all components to go and where, where something will fit or not, I ordered some new DC-DC converters, and if you've watched my Quinbox episodes, you might have seen those. The first one of those to arrive is this tiny guy, or rather, it has a rectangular shape because I want to hide it in one of the beams of the scooter itself. So this uh, officially can handle 10 amps. Well, I don't know what kind of crack those people are smoking, but that is never ever going to happen. Um, currently I have both set up and I'm running about 15 watts of input voltage uh, or input wattage basically and that goes through the 48 volt power supply and also the one over here and then it goes through the DC-DC converters to one a Quinn LED Dig Uno controller to feed 144 LEDs, and as I said, the limit in WLED for both has been set to 3000 milliamps. And, well, uh, I'll be overlaying some thermal graphs, but this one, well, as I said, 10 amps, no way. 3 amps, no way. It gets way too hot in the previous tests I did. Uh, maybe 1.5 amp would have been okay. And it's, it's reasonable as a DC-DC converter, but I have my, uh, my graveyard over there. One of them didn't just voltage out of the box for some reason. And while the other I cabled wrong or I did something with it and it sparked and it never worked again. So quality wise, they aren't that great. Maybe I can't fault them for my faults, but eh. And in the last Quinn box, I showed you this guy and let me take the light away a little bit and this guy is much it's even compactor it's a bit wider but uh, it's actually quite heavy or a lot heavier than the other one is and that's probably because there's a lot more copper in here and as you can see it also doesn't have terminals but it has well i i soldered these connections on i'll show you some overlay images of that and all in all, it's just a lot better quality. It's more expensive, but as I said, I've had both running with three amps for about half an hour now. And uh, well, I'll, I'll overlay some FLIR footage of the left one and the right one to compare the temperatures getting. And as I said, I like this one the best. It also has the most protection on there. It has no protruding pins. I used some captain tape to uh, tape it off a little bit. Uh, all of the exposed copper on the back is ground, so that's no problem either. It has lots of uh, through holes or vias for venting heat and using both planes. And all in all, I just really like the design. And as I said, it's a lot heavier, so there's probably a lot more copper in there. 
And, uh, well, it doesn't get too hot. At 3 amps, it gets around uh, 90 degrees, 95. I don't have it in front of me right now. Um, but that's okay. The data sheet, it says it thermally shuts down at 176 degrees. So we're pretty far from that. But, of course, this is in the open air. Now, there's no real airflow in this room. Um, but open open air nonetheless and if I'm going to stick it in a tube well there will probably be less airflow there now if it warms up the air inside of that tube the tube is metal so absorb some of that warmth and maybe um, dispense it on the air of the outside of the tube but on the other hand if the Sun is on there it might get really hot in there so I don't really know and I want to stay below maybe 80 90 degrees and well if it can run 3 amps for 144 LEDs. As you can see, I've been running a little pattern that is uh, has a lot of light in it. And, uh, well, it's been doing that without much of an issue. And we can also go to a more colorful pattern like this, for instance. And uh, this uses 2.2 amps, and we're going not going to use 144 LEDs, but uh, I believe 110 or 112, I don't know from head. So less than 144. And then I don't think I have too much of a problem that it will survive. But let me get the scooter and I'll show you what work I've been doing on that already. Okay, well, as you can see, the scooter is now on my desk again. And I've been working on it off and on and uh, doing some cabling wires. It actually uh, stands up pretty nicely on its uh, steering column. And, well, what I have done is, if you look in here, you see the controller board, and then over here is all the battery. Now, the battery we're not going to remove, but the controller board you can unplug, and there's like three of these uh, connection points. One is down there, and this is the power connector for the battery. It's a XT30. As I, well, I looked up online before doing this, so I have some of those. And you can take the controller out like this, or at least flip it over without disconnecting everything. These are the disconnected leads from the controller. And funny thing is, this whole area inside was fully covered with thermal compound, because the back side of the controller is actually the heat sinks for the MOSFETs inside, and it then uh, sinks the heat away to the chassis. That's pretty cool. So these are all the cables that come from the controller. This is the brake cable, and it's very tight. It's, it has this little bend here, but it's supposed to go under the controller, and it isn't. And well, hey, as long as it's working, and let me step on it. Yeah, that's still working. So that's good. We can test that when it's all, once it's all in. Now, I've been wiring and trying to mock it up and see how I would do things. So there's three wires coming out of here, and these are all 18 gauge uh, silicone wire, so rated up to 200 degrees. Uh, because, well, uh, we'll see later, it can get hot in there. Uh, so we have those three wires again, and those will go to the three LED strips, one on this side, one on the other side, and then a one on the front, which I can address individually. Because, well, they're individually addressable LEDs, and WLED actually has some nice functions for that. Then I have this little blue guy. And this is 24 gauge, I think, but that's just going to be the data wire going to the first LED strip. And then we'll have to split it to go to the two LED strips on the side. We're not going to do that today, we're just going to look at the cabling and maybe do some more stuff. So what I did... Instead of drilling new holes and stuff like that, I kind of misused one of these uh, rubber... There's a... Well, there is already a slot here uh, where normally the brake cable and some other cables come through. So I'm going to misuse that hole, and I have several extra of these silicone grommets, and I kind of uh, edited it a little bit to make a wider gap. Well, to get these cables out there. And... Um, that way, I don't have to drill a new hole. Uh, these are just now affixed with, uh, well, with some tie wraps, and we'll see how that holds, and maybe I have to do it a little bit better. We'll see. But I also brought the switch outside, because this thing is pretty big, and there just 
isn't a lot of room here and oh, this is actually where the charger port normally sits so i removed that but you can easily screw it back in but i didn't really want to drill in this chassis so what i'm going to end up doing i think is i'm going to either put it here like uh, like this or maybe the other way around I'm not sure yet and or maybe even just uh, here and I'll somehow uh, heat shrink this off or at least make sure it's uh, fully watertight. I have some of that double and triple layered heat shrink with glue inside and maybe add some hot glue inside of it to make sure it's fully sealed. And I think I can actually just seal over this whole block basically. Uh, but I'm going to see how I'm going to do that. And that's these two wires. I already have something attached. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, these two wires, so the red one here will be connected to the battery. Then it goes through the inline fuse I showed in the first video. Then it goes all the way through here. It goes through this switch. And we can, uh, we can switch it on and off. And then it goes back through the black wire. And that ends up here, which will then go as the positive voltage for our microcontroller don't know if this thing is focusing correctly let's hope so and then for the black wire i just need a little uh, extension piece in the end coming from the xt30 from the battery which as i explained in the previous video we're going to split and now that i have a dc dc converter selected that might actually fit actually let's test that of course i already tested it quickly I kind of decided that the only place it can go is right here into this space. And there's some air in there, uh, and I don't know how it'll work with cooling. I might need to lower the total amperage to like 2 amps, so that might dim some effects, but things like single colors and stuff like that will still run at full power. And well, then the DC-DC converter is uh, hit in there. And if I quickly move the controller back, I can't really with one hand. Hold on. Okay, managed to uh, squeeze the controller back in there. Uh, in the end, we're going to take one of my Quinn LED Dig Uno boards. And once this is all uh, plugged in, it'll be a bit flatter. And then I think it can sit right over here. And it, it'll actually be squished against, uh, well, the backboard here. This is all plastic and I'm probably going to wrap it in Captain tape anyway because it won't get too hot uh, with only two or three amps going through it. And well, then I just hope I can close it all up and then finish off uh, all this wire mess as neatly as possible. So next thing, let's try and make the XT30 uh, distribution wires, I guess you could call it so that we can go from the battery output and then make a T connection, one going through a fuse to the switch and then to the Quinn LED board, and then one going directly into the controller like it used to before.
Well now, after that horrible solder job, and I never said I was good at this, I think it's good enough, otherwise I wouldn't put it in my own scooter, but yeah, could be better, but I don't solder XT30 connectors every day, and actually by the last connector was actually going better. Anyway, let's uh, look at it now all completed in the scooter, or while the, the wires are together, it's not in the scooter yet. So let's see. Here is the connector from the battery, and normally that will go into that port there on the controller. But now it goes into our little split cable, and there is a separate XT30 connector, which can go back into the controller. That all works, uh, I just tested that off camera. But continuing, we have a the different split from the T that goes into this connector, and then it goes through my fuse here, which we talked about in a previous video. It goes all the way through the neck here. It comes to this switch and then it goes all the way back and it becomes, well, a black cable. But then I make it red again because it has to go in the voltage converter. And then the voltage converter goes into a Quinn LED Dig Uno module and that has some LEDs attached. Now, in theory, this is attached and live, so if I flip this switch, we have LEDs that are running off of the internal battery. So, this is far from complete, but I think this is far enough for this video. We now have LEDs running from internal battery power, and in theory, uh, the wiring to the controller and stuff like that is complete. So I will continue wiring all the, well, these wires and sticking the LED strip on there and stuff like that. But that is going to be for a next video. And I just want to reiterate, I'm just doing this for the first time too. So you're kind of going along with me on the journey. This might not be the best way to do it, but be a way to do it, I guess. And I hope you enjoyed yourself. Let me know down in the comments what you think or tips for doing things differently. Those are always welcome. And uh, I hope to see you back in the next video. Bye-bye.